Hey everybody, Patrick here with Rap4. It is December 3rd, 2012, and this is Monday Night Paintball. All right guys, time for some paintball news and industry trends. For those of you in the state of Hawaii, there's gonna be a pretty cool scenario going on in March. That's so March 2nd and 3rd, 2013. It's a bit far out there, but it looks pretty cool. It's gonna cost $50, getting put on by Oahu Scenarios at uh, Hawaii Extreme Paintball Park in Kalealoa. Now it's called Clash on Olympus, and it's gonna have kind of a Greek theme of gods versus heroes. Very cool. For those of you who are planning on attending, be sure to take a bunch of pictures and videos and send them back to us so we can show everybody. The FBI has custody of a couple of terrorism suspects who may have trained at a paintball facility in Chino. Now, these two gentlemen are currently under arrest and they may have been training in the Corona area of California at a Middle Eastern style paintball field. Now, the only field that I can think of that fits that criteria is SC Village, but the FBI has not released the name of the field that they may have been training at. They were picking paintball guns that would look like assault rifles so they can get a realistic feel. Unfortunately, that's kind of a dark, dark moment for paintball as far as um, using it for evil. Speaking of evil, um, in a Walmart uh, robbery recently, about $3,488 worth of electronics were stolen. Um, looks like suspects ran in with some shopping carts, filled them up. On their way out, they warned everybody not to follow them or they were going to shoot them. Well, they weren't going to use guns, they are going to use paintball guns. Now, police thought they heard gunshots, but it was in fact just paintball markers shooting at the store to keep people back uh, from following the suspects out into the parking lot. Once again, uh, very sad to see paintball used for evil. Looks like Ramped Magazine is going to call it quits for 2013. It's a magazine based on the paintball lifestyle. I personally thought it was pretty cool, but it looks like they're going to call it quits for the rest of the year. Um, hopefully they're going to come back in 2013. They had some really cool articles in there. Um, it looks like the team is also um, looking forward to coming back uh, with a vengeance as far as having some really cool content. But for the rest of the year, no more Ramped Magazine. Now for this week's tactical tip, I'm actually going to hand over the stage to Murphy from Savoy 6. Uh, now Murphy is a United States Marine. Um, him and his wife, Small Murphy or Smurphy, are two of the most potent players on the team. Uh, now for those of you who don't know about Savoy 6, Savoy stands for saving a veteran of yours and 6 represents watching your back. They're a really cool paintball team in Southern California. They're involved in a lot of veteran charities and they pick up veterans after they get out of the military or while they're in. Uh, to give them that kind of adrenaline experience that they might be missing. So, no further ado, Murphy from Savoy 6. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Murph with Savoy 6, Scenario Paintball Team. A lot of people have been asking about the powder balls that we're at 4 makes, so I figured we'd make a little video. We've been playing with them a little bit, and I uh, just want to show you my experiences with them, and uh, pros and cons, and just give a little bit more explanation of what the heck they are because a lot of people are like what's going on because a lot of you guys saw that amphibious assault video where they're firing out of lakes and you're like how are they not getting barrel breaks with paintballs well a powder ball is a paraffin wax ball it, that's what the shell's made out of as you can see it uh, looks like it's indented like a golf ball almost but it's, it's completely smooth it's completely smooth it's going to fly a little bit further a little bit straighter and the filling is powder so when you hit something it's going to give a nice distinct puff of smoke and uh, you know there's no way somebody's gonna be able to wipe that and say hey you didn't hit me because it's literally going to look like a bottle of baby powder just went off on you. so that's kind of cool one little hint though if you do get some of these bad boys and you want to use them at a local field get their permission first because uh, some management some owners they like them some of them don't some of them don't know what the hell they are so make sure you talk to them and uh, make sure you get permission because this is one of those things where it's it's going to be a lot worse if you ask for forgiveness rather than permission so i'm going to fire a couple of them show you what they do uh they're pretty awesome i like them a lot so see that little puff of smoke there see and so you see that it gives off a whole bunch of smoke or a whole bunch of powder as it were so um, it's going to get all over the place but it has a really pleasant smell to it 
so uh, that's kind of cool because most times at the end of the day paintball you smell like a swamp monster coming out of there so hey at least you'll smell a little better at the end of the day but um, enjoy them take care of them uh, you don't have to worry about the rain getting to them you don't have to worry about them swelling from the heat or the cold you know contracting them they're gonna stay the same they're gonna keep on playing no matter what and you don't have to worry about them bleeding where like a lot of uh, paintballs, a lot of people at the Decay of Nations this year were complaining because uh, some of the paintballs were sweating and literally the paint was leaking out of the shell. You don't have to worry about that with these. So it's pretty awesome. Enjoy them. Flat Rat 4 know uh, what you think about them. And uh, yeah, so thanks guys. And uh, there'll be some more videos to come. Appreciate it. So Voice 6 has their own Facebook page where you can go and you can ask any questions you want. They have 35 members who will be happy to answer any questions about paintball tactics or gear, or perhaps you want to know how the 468, the MKP2, or maybe even the DMAX perform on the battlefield. Now, they're our flagship team, so we send them a lot of our products that are still in the prototype phase for them to test and give us feedback on so they would know. They've been playing with the 468 since Operation and War 3, and they're uh, definitely enjoying it, and they're uh, giving us a lot of really useful feedback from that. So check them out on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash Savoy6Paintball. Be sure to like them on it as well and follow them because a lot of the images of our products being used in, on, in actual games actually hit their page first. So if you want a sneak peek, be sure to follow them on Facebook. Today I'm going to show you some new features that we have not discussed as far as the 468 when using DMAGs. Um, there's been a lot of questions as far as uh, how it operates. Are, is there going to be a DMAG for the 468? And just to clarify, there will be a DMAG for the 468. Uh, something I want to show you, basically with every MAGFED system out there, um, it's, it's, it's a limitation I suppose, but it's present in all systems that we've ever done, as well as most systems that we see that are out there. And this phenomenon is basically, when you insert a magazine, you basically have to shoot through all the rounds before you um, can remove the magazine even to check how many rounds you have left to see if you have any rounds left in there because what would happen is you'll basically lose rounds when you take it out of here so I'm gonna go ahead and show you basically through everything that we have here to show how this happens and also how we've avoided this with the 468 all right so first I'll start with the 468 this is the uh, 468 with the Noveski uh, handguard uh, set up with a stainless steel barrel um, again, this, this is basically what, it's kind of like a pre-production model, but it's very representative of what it will be when it's finally released. Um, these have been sent out to games to certain people, and basically a lot of the questions that, or requests that were asked, we've been solved now. Um, but anyway, showing this, so this is a 468 with a traditional classic T68 magazine. We insert the magazine, and we're dropping two rounds. We insert it again and we're dropping two rounds basically just over and over so you can't really check or every time you do this you're going to be losing rounds okay this is the uh, 468 this also happens with the t68 as well as all the mag kits uh, that have been that have been out tiberius t8 full magazine again same thing when you load a magazine inside and remove it we're dropping two rounds start it again well we have one in there but there it goes Load it again, dropping rounds. So again, basically every MagFed system has been dropping these uh, rounds that you they're taking out of the magazine. So the Tiberius T4, a great gun, shoots uh, first strike. Uh, but again, this this uh, phenomenon is present with the first strike rounds and paintball. Here I'm using some plastic rounds in the magazine, same as all these tests I've been conducting. Uh, but again, we're gonna load it in here, take it out, two rounds. Two rounds. So it's basically one round that's in the chamber and then one's in the pre-chamber, let's call it. It's like uh, waiting to be chambered. So all these rounds are always coming out with uh, all these traditional magazine fed systems. Same thing again as many traditional mag fed systems, uh, my Milsig CQB. Put it in. Two rounds. So again, it's very it's a very similar situation. Again, these magazines are very similar to the T68 or vice versa. Uh, so they definitely do the same thing when you load it in. Two rounds, pretty much every time. All right, so finally we reached the 468 with the DMAG Magwell and DMAG system. Again, uh, what we've seen with every other marker system that at least has been out or that even we've been working with or 
pretty much anything that we've seen. They all drop rounds when you do want to do a magazine check. You know, I mean, obviously some can say, well, why would you want to remove a magazine? But in firearms, if you're shooting, you're doing a tactical reload, who knows? Maybe you had a malfunction. Maybe you want to check to see if you have more rounds in your magazine. It's nice to be able to take it out, see that you have rounds, so you can identify what other problem you could be having. So, again, 468, 14 round D-Mag, fully loaded. Put it in, take it out, no rounds fall out. Flip it around, put it in, no rounds fall out. So again, this is the advantage of the 468, of how it's um, basically the system. There is a trap system inside the magwa. Obviously, you're not able to shoot the rounds that are, well, you have a chamber indicator here. You're not able to shoot the rounds that are in the, in the pre-chamber, but they're not falling out. So you can be sure that you won't be losing any rounds. Now, if you're looking at something like first strike rounds, well, I think we all know uh, the price of those, so nobody wants to lose any, um, or have to duck down, pick them up, and clean them up, or whatever. So, yeah, this is one of the main advantages of the 468 system with the D-Mags. So again, not only the low cost, the ability to use shape projectiles or first strikes, and again, you're not losing any rounds when you're doing your, your shooting, so. All right, so now we'll be shooting the 468 with the D-Mags. Um, you know, just, we already went through how we're not losing rounds. We're gonna get into a little more detail as far as how the trap system operates and, and basically, yeah, what you have to do to shoot your rounds and everything else. But right now, let's do some shooting. magazines emptied um, again so if you do a, a, a shot count you don't have to cock it back which of course takes a little discipline in uh, knowing how many rounds you have in your system uh, to do that but it's definitely very handy to know how many rounds you have um, you know again if you want to do double taps or triple taps and count them you're able to do that so remember with a twin 10 stack round you can do three triple taps and a single and with a 14 round you can do three double taps and a single I mean simple simple stuff all right, so the 468, um, again, the way that the trap system works, basically there is a space for two rounds that, let's call it a buffer zone. So if you want to shoot 20 rounds out of a 20 round magazine, you basically have to have 22 rounds on you, meaning that two rounds will be on inside the chamber and then the following rounds will be uh, in the magazine and so forth. So again, I mean, it's uh, a minor drawback as far as we see it, to be able to consistently shoot rounds and not have any loss of projectiles and also, uh, again, just to, to make it a more realistic system. So, I mean, imagine you're doing a military training situation and a bullet comes out. I mean, a bullet comes out of your magazine. I think it'll look pretty awkward and definitely somebody would think that of not as a real training situation. So that's one of the main reasons we decided to go about it this way. D-Mags were really designed for the mag kits. So by implementing it onto the 468 or to a previous system like the T-68, we had to devise a way to allow the rounds to reach the chamber and not have to drop them. But that also really gives us a way to be able to use a D-Mag system in pretty much any platform that's been made ever. So again, We'll definitely consider any markers that are out there to see if it's worthwhile to make a D-Mag system for it. But I certainly think some do warrant uh, making that adapter or so forth to make it possible. Thank you very much. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Now remember, Monday Night Paintball is your show. We make it from the content generated from our Facebook page. So if there's anything you'd like to see in next week's episode, just go to facebook.com slash rap4usa and let us know. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you out there.